it's perhaps not obvious to people that the fall in the value of the currency is going to hit some small businesses that have either euro or dollar denominated costs very seriously. And I hope that one of the simple things that we could call for is some leniency from the government, particularly uh, the HMRC, in respect of those businesses that are going to suffer as a result of this vote, which admittedly I campaigned for as their advisor. But nevertheless, there are some which are going to be very vulnerable to the sudden drop in confidence and the uh, value of sterling. Um, I'm convener of Greenleaves. My name is Mark Hill. This was a campaign group created specifically to allow Greens and left-wingers to feel confident and supported if they had chosen to vote Leave. And a substantial minority, some 25% of the Green uh, vote at the 2015 election, based on exit polls, appeared to agree. And we campaigned using a fairly liberal selection of dignitaries and celebrities from the left and the Green movement. I'll just read out a quote from one of them and invite you to guess who I'm talking about. An ominous veil of secrecy surrounds negotiations on the transatlantic trade and investment partnership. There are serious concerns on the power of corporate lobbyists to undermine parliamentary democracy because the deal will allow them to demand and exercise commercial rights that override national sovereignty when it comes to public services. The EU has not sought to exclude health from the TTIP negotiations. Environmental issues and public services are being sidelined in favour of greedy bankers and multinationals who see vast profits to be made. Ladies and gentlemen, guess who said that? And the answer is, of course, from the back there, Jeremy Corbyn. And now, obviously, another potential victim of this very brave decision that I think we've collectively taken. We went through a huge political and constitutional experiment, it seems to me, one that the British people have never faced before, at least not outside times of civil war. Unprecedented, constitutionally vital, because it's opened up so many issues uh, other than just the one on the European Union membership. I think we discovered some amazing things. We discovered that we, as a people, don't particularly like the EU, even those people who voted Remain, voted Remain in the hope that, refor uh, in, in the hope that ref reform might conceivably be possible within the European Union. It's perhaps not surprising if you think about all of the other referenda that the European Union has fought and lost, with similar biases to the one that we found in this particular campaign. I think we have discovered that a substantial number of people value their democracy and the quality of that democracy and accountability of public officials. They value that more than the scare stories that they were told about what would happen to their economy, their price of housing, the uh, uh, cost of their foreign holidays, wages, and all the rest of it. I think we also discovered that there was no unanimity in the country and not even amongst any of its constituent groups. No political tribe, no district of the country, no class, no educational group, no religion was unanimous. There was debate everywhere and throughout. And it was wonderful that so many people cared, so many ordinary people enjoyed participating in a democracy that perhaps they have felt excluded from for far too long. People were talking across the board. A huge response. Perhaps the proudest thing we should be uh, thinking about is the 72.5% of people that, that participated on the back of the largest electorate we have ever seen, and one that was increasing right to the last minute of the extended registration deadline. And as for the lessons, well, I hope that we uh, reconsider our attitude to electoral reform. I'm not particularly convinced by party list systems. I'm pretty sure that the referendum actually was a slap in the face of just about every political party. And party lists, therefore, I don't think would be an appropriate way forward. But single transferable vote is another way that we might perhaps develop and a better accountability for Westminster reform of the House of Lords. I think the biggest success was the referendum itself. We've uh, uh, got poor traditions of referenda in this country, unlike many others. And I think there should be a movement for legally binding referenda uh, on cit and citizens' initiatives, both locally and national, on issues that prevent, which, which, um, which cause the uh, politicians complete deadlock. Things like devolution, the, uh, uh, the war on drugs, uh, cannabis, nukes, 
Assisted suicide is one that the, the government is absolutely tortured by. They have got an attitude... I'm so sorry, I've got to be tight on time. Okay, I'll be very quick. Um, but above all, I think that devolution has to come out of this. We have to see more power devolved to local authorities and more power to regional authorities. And above all, the remainders need to accept the result. I particularly want to see this guy re-elected. Because I think that that would be the right signal to send to the people, to the Labour voters, who basically, if they voted Remain at all, did so with their noses pinched. And I think that this guy pitched it about right in his highly qualified support for the EU during the referendum campaign. Okay.